So hopefully we haven't done this before. Uh, so organic, it's uh, it's not organic. It's just no, it's still not organic. This one, I guess. So you think um. He's saying that uh, there's a compound which can be produced. Uh, yep, this one. This is the only part that's organic. So he's saying, he's saying draw the structure of L. So how do you go from an arene, that's an arene that's got a carbon chain, right? To an acyl chloride. So what do you do? Uh, what you do is that if you rem remember that arenes can be converted into what? They can be converted into? Carboxylic acids. Like you, there's oxidation of arenes. This branch will be converted into a carboxylic acid. It will become cetyl bond O. And which, and this part will also become cetyl bond O and which. Is that clear? Yes, sir. And then you have to get rid of this OH and uh, replace it with Cl. So the OH gets lost and gets replaced by Cl. It forms an acyl chloride. So how do you convert it into an arene? You um, reflux, it, reflux it with KMnO4, acidified. And how do you convert it into an acyl chloride? You react it with PCl3 or uh, plus heat. Yeah, that's that's the reaction for converting. Let me open the spider chart as well. That's uh, so carboxylic acid. Wait, would you have carboxylic acid? Just a second. Yep, this one. This reaction over here, uh, so this reaction over here, the carboxylic acid will turn into an acyl chloride if you react it with PCl3 or SOCl2 or even PCl5 plus heat. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Uh, draw the structure, we did that. Uh, moving on, uh, he's saying that, no, that's more about mechanism. So this one, fumaric acid, he's talking about fumaric acid. Identify the products of the reaction between formatic acid and an excess of hot concentrated acidified came before. So this, and you have to identify the products. Now this question is more about uh, about AS. You got you got an alkene, right? A double bond, and then there's a carboxylic acid group, and on this side there's a carboxylic acid group. Uh, you're going to have 1H and you're going to have 1H over here as well. Now, this is hot concentrated acidified KMnO4. That's a uh, strong oxidation. Now, for this, you would need uh, some revision of your AS alkene oxidation, which I think that's covered in part three over here. That's uh, like if you open this, the way you're doing the reduction and oxidation part uh let me add polymerization and initially just one second so right at the top of this of, of these notes you had the whole oxidation part right and right at the top the first thing that you did was uh you did the oxidation of alkenes that's part of as that's uh you have mild oxidation where you use uh Cold dilute alkaline KMnO4. What happens is that the alkene turns into a diol. It's like an addition reaction. Double bond, the OH groups, they get added to it. Right? And then you have strong oxidation. Strong oxidation happens when you have hot concentrated KMnO4 and the double bond completely breaks. When it completely breaks, you've got three scenarios. One is that the double bond has, a, has two hydrogens. The carbon has two hydrogens attached to it. So that means uh, it will turn into carbon dioxide and water. The second scenario is that the double bond has a carbon chain and an H that is attached to it. 
it's got one carbon chain. That will turn into a carboxylic acid. That particular double bonded carbon will turn into a carboxylic acid. Third scenario is that the double bond has two carbon chains. That carbon will turn into a ketone once the double bond breaks. So here are your here are your some examples like the double bond will break. Carbon has two H's, so that will turn into carbon dioxide. This carbon over here has two carbon chains. So this carbon, I mean only this carbon, only we're only focusing on this carbon. So this carbon will turn into a ketone. That's it. Uh, some other scenarios you got. You got double bonds. We're going to do this. Uh, you got double bonds. Double bonds are going to break. This carbon has two carbon chains. I mean, focus on the double bonded carbon. This one. So this carbon will turn into a ketone. It will turn into single bond O. This carbon over here has two carbon chains. It's got two carbon chains attached to it. So this carbon will also turn into a ketone. It's going to turn into acetyl bond O. Double bond will break over here. This carbon will turn into a carboxylic acid. This one over here, because it's got only one carbon chain. So it turns into a carboxylic acid. This carbon has one carbon chain attached to it. So it will also turn into a carboxylic acid. So it's going to break over here. It's going to break over here. And you figure out the both products. So is that clear, Asina? Yes, sir. So these three scenarios, we're going to focus on these three scenarios. So the double bond will break, right? It's going to break in the middle. And our focus is what's going to, I mean, the rest of the molecule will kind of remain the same. Our focus is on these two carbon atoms. What's going to happen to them? Um, so what kind of, this carbon has only one carbon chain attached to it. So it will turn into a carboxylic acid. This carbon over here also has one carbon chain attached to it. So it will also turn into a carboxylic acid. So it's going to be acetyl bond O and O and, and OH. And you have this, as anyways, you've got this C. So this carbon turns into a, a carboxylic acid. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So this carbon over here, I see this. So this carbon over here turns into carboxyl. The other thing is exactly the same. So you're going to get this thing. He's saying identify the product. So it's uh, this one is ethane dioic acid. I mean, it's eth, two carbon atoms, and two carboxylic acids. So it's ethane and dioic acid. That is what this thing is. Now, the other thing is uh, fumaric acid can form addition and condensation polymers. Draw the repeat unit of the polymer, uh, of the addition polymer. So, coming back to fumaric acid, how do you form an addition polymer? Remember, addition polymers are formed around double bonds. So, you, so but the first thing that you have to do is, when you've got an addition polymer, the first thing that you're going to do is uh, make sure that there's nothing on the right side or the left side of the double bond. So what, what you're going to do is you take this carboxylic acid and sort of bend it downwards. You don't break it. You just bend it downwards. You take this carboxylic acid on the left side and you sort of push it downwards because you, you need to open the right and left side. That's where the connections will happen. So, so you have to redraw this molecule. There's a double bond. And there's an H and an H. Now, this carboxylic acid, it has to be, instead of drawing it on the right side, you're going to draw, draw it downwards. Is that clear? Yes, sir. And the one on the left side will also be drawn in a downward direction. And now you can make, so you need to open up the right and left side. You're not, you're not going to break any bonds. You're just going to sort of bend it downwards, right? So I've got I said, so I've got this thing now. And they're going to link up. The double bond in the middle will turn into a single bond.
and the and the molecules are going to link up. And he's saying you were just you're supposed to draw the repeat unit, so the repeat unit would have been this one. Just write it. Is that clear? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, next one. Draw the repeat unit of the polyester formed when fumaric acid reacts with ethane one two diol. That's that's now your typical uh, polyester that will be formed. Okay, you've got you've got. I mean, this is fumaric acid. I'll bond O. Okay, that was what your fumaric acid is. This is ethane one two diol. Eth means two carbon atoms. Uh, one two diol means one OH over here. Diol, two two alls, two alcohols. One at one, the other one is at two, and you can add the hydrogens as well. So it's CH two, and the other one is also CH two. So what's going to happen? There's going to be ester linkages that will be formed. The OH will be lost, and the H will be lost, and in the middle. So in the middle, they would. So there's one O that's left over here, okay, which I mistakenly. So there's an O over here. I said the H and OH they will form water. There's a condensation reaction, and they would link up, and that's your ester link. Now, since it's a polyester, that means uh, the linkages will happen on the left side as well, and it will continue on the right side as well. So it will just continue. So the H will be lost from the alcohol, and the OH will be lost from the from the carboxylic acid. So what you're going to do is that there'll be other molecules that will be linking with it on the sides, and that's your N. That's your that's your repeat unit. Is this clear as well? I mean, is this clear? Yes, sir. As I explain, yes, sir. As I, so explain why poly, polyesters bio, normally biodegrade more red, readily than uh, than polyalkenes. I said, now these carbon chains are kind of non-polar. The carbon chain is like really, really stable. It's pretty hard to actually sort of break it down. So, so what happens is that that the carbon chain. Or the or the alkyl chain is normally it's normally non-polar and it won't attract other molecules while the ester link is highly polar so so the carbon chain I mean this part is polar so molecules might react over here but the chain will not break uh, the carbon chain is usually very very inert uh, you've you've I mean, you you barely study any reactions. Like you do, if you if you look at all the reactions, like if you look at the organic spider chart, there are hardly any reactions where the carbon chain is actually breaking. You, you don't see any. I mean, there are things getting added onto the carbon chain, but the carbon chain itself is not breaking up. You don't you don't see the carbon chain actually splitting or breaking up, right? Uh, the reason is that it's non-polar. It, it's not. It's very unreactive. Okay, so things get added onto it, things get removed from it, but the chain itself does not break. Is that idea clear? Is that part clear? Yes. Yes, sir. So the ester link is uh, very polar. I mean, this carbon is positive, this oxygen is very, very negative. So it will hydrolyze a lot. Uh, it's going to be easily hydrolyzed. Like you, you got a water molecule. The lone pairs, the negative lone pairs on the water molecule will very strongly get attracted to the carbon. So it's, it's going to be very reactive. So it's highly polar. I mean, the ester link is highly polar. So that kind of means that it's going to be very, very reactive. So the unmark answer for this one. Then you've got fumaric acid and it's... Uh, He's saying only three stereoisomers of P exist. One of the stereoisomers is shown. And it's supposed to draw the other two stereoisomers. So, so he's saying only three stereoisomers. Why, why is he saying only three stereoisomers exist? Okay, let me explain. I mean, this one is difficult to actually visualize uh, in three dimensions. But we can try. So what will happen is, 
is this carbon chiral or not? I mean, this one. Uh, no, sir. Yeah. Does it have four different groups attached to it? You got an OH, you got an H, you got a carboxylic acid. On, on the fourth side, you got this thing. So is this chiral? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. So this one is chiral, right? So chiral carbon, when you, whenever you have a chiral carbon, what happens to it? it uh, like when it's attached to, it's, it's got mirror images, right? Like if you've got, so there's going to be another molecule that will exist. And what will be that molecule? That molecule will be a mirrored version of the same thing, right? Is that clear? Yes. I said, now, there's one thing. Now, practice this thing. Like, how do you mirror this molecule? There's one way. One way is that it depends on how you place the mirror, right? So if I place the mirror over here, the mirrored version will be the same thing, but it will be like horizontally flipped. I mean, it's going to be H, the dotted CST will be on this side. And the OH will still be out of the page, right? And you'll have a CL over here. Is that clear? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. I said, no, that's sir? the one. Sir, when we flip um, and we write CH3 as H3C, is that important or can you hey, that's, hey, that's, that, that's, not, that's not very important. Okay. Right. Achha, so, uh, because he, I mean, that's not very important. Achha, but the thing is, uh, this is the one that you're used to, right? I said, now, it all depends on how you actually place the mirror or where you actually place the mirror. So, let's do another one. Let's say I don't place the mirror over here. Let's say I place the mirror on top. Like right over here. So how would the mirrored version now look like? Now it's going to be vertically flipped, right? It's going to be like this, that the H will be downwards and the CST will be actually pointing upwards and the OH will be, I mean, kind of pointing upwards and the CL will be in this direction. So is this idea clear that I've placed the mirror on top? I mean, you can draw the flipped version on top of this, right? This thing. So is this also clear that that's also a flipped version? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Right? Let's see, is this clear? Oh, yes, sir. So there's another place where you could place the mirror, right? Imagine, so you can place it on the top, you can place it on the right side, or what you can do is you can place it right in front of it. Like right in front of it. Uh, now what will happen? If, if I imagine that the mirror is now, let me get rid of this. So imagine that the mirror is now placed right in front of this, right? I mean, imagine your screen as the mirror. What's going to happen? So it's going to flip like, it's going to flip towards you, right? So what will happen now is that the bond that's going away from you, that's uh, going to be coming towards you, right? I mean, the H and CL will maintain their position. You got H, you got carbon, you got CL. And now what will happen is that the OH will be going into the page and the CST will actually be coming out of the page. Like if the screen is the mirror, right? So the bond that's on top, that will stay on top. Like if you see in the mirror, your head is on top, your head stays on the top, right? Uh, your left hand over here, that will stay over there, right? But what will happen is that the bond that was going away would actually be pointing in the same day. I mean, like if you stand right in front of the mirror, right? And you like raise your arm and you point it into the direction of the mirror. Uh, so it will be going into, into the mirror, right? Your image, your hand will be actually going in the opposite direction. Is that clear? Um, yes, sir. But sir, uh, if the OH was actually right in the middle, does that mean it won't change I mean, position? I mean, it will, but it's, uh, imagine this thing. 
I mean, let's say, let's say, let's try it this way. Just to clear your confusion that the OH is now actually going into the board, right? And the CH3 is coming out of the board. So imagine yourself standing right in front of the mirror, right? So what happens is, so you're standing right in front of the mirror. You point your arm towards the mirror. Where's the image pointing the arm? It's in the exact opposite direction and it's towards you, right? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, the molecule kind of looks exactly the same. Like your image looks exactly the same. Your head is on top, it stays on the top. Your left arm is on the left side, it's still, it's still on the left side. Your CST is on the right side, it's still on the right side, right? So everything maintains position, except for now, how is the image flipping? It's flipping in your direction. Like if your hand is pointing towards the mirror, the mirror's hand will be pointing towards you. Is that clear? Yes, yes sir. So it all depends, like, how do you actually imagine where the mirror is, right? So, I mean, you're used to one idea, but it all depends how you imagine where the mirror is placed. If it's placed on the side over here, then it's going to be horizontally flipped. If it's placed on top, it's going to be vertically flipped. If it's like right in front of it, then the thing that's coming towards you, that will be going into the board. And the thing that's going into the board, that will be coming out of the board. And the things that were not either going into or out of the board, they would just remain wherever they are. So, so this molecule over here, what you've got over here is that the carboxylic acid maintains its position over here. So I said, now coming back to this question, that's a, that's a chiral center, right? You agree with that, right? That's a chiral center. So there's going to be a molecule that where one of the sides, I mean, this side, it will be flipped around. But how is he flipping? The carboxylic acid remains over there. So that means you had an H that was going into the board. Now that H will be coming out of the board. You had an OH that was coming out of the board, but now that OH will be going into the board. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So that's, that's your flipped version. Again, that's a flipped version. So that's one side flipped. What could be the other option? I mean, the other side remains exactly the same. So we're going to draw the other side and we're going to draw it exactly the same. So I've got carboxylic acid over here. I said, what's the other version? The other version is that this molecule has another chiral center and that's the other one. This thing is also chiral. So this arrangement, I mean, this thing is also chiral, right? So the other molecule will be that this thing remains exactly the same. This side is flipped. Like one of the carbons is has a different uh, arrangement around it. So I said, now you're free. They didn't actually give you anything. So you're, you're free, free to flip it around any ways you like. So what I'll do is I'm going to do the same thing. Like uh, the OH remains here. The H was going into the board. So the OH was going into the board. So uh, the COH should remain there. The COH should remain there. The H was going into the board. Now it's going to be coming out of the board. The OH was going out of the board. Now it's going to be going into the board. Okay, so I've, I've flipped this part now. I mean, I mean, not flipped, mirrored it, right? And this part remains exactly the same. It's uh, it's H and OH. So what I've done is I've drawn two versions of this molecule. Uh, this was one version. The other arrangement was that one side is flipped. I mean, this side is flipped, so it looks like this. There could be another version of the molecule where this side is flipped and it looks like this. Is that clear? So there are three stereoisomers for this. Are we clear on this? Uh, yes, yes, sir. So in reality, there should have been actually four. 
because remember you got two chiral centers you got one carbon that's chiral you got another carbon that's chiral uh, so the molecule in total has two chiral so there should be four arrangements right that i'm going to write plus as the original version that both carbons are in the original three dimensional arrangement then we had one arrangement where one of the side gets flipped then we have another arrangement where where the other side gets flipped right there should have been a fourth arrangement where uh, there should have been a fourth arrangement and in that arrangement both sides should be flipped at the same time right so the molecule will have in total should have four arrangements is that clear yes sir because yes, sir. you have because you had two carbons and both of them were carbon right now the thing is that this molecule is i think i've drawn the I'm, i think I've, i've drawn this one as i mean this one is kind of incorrect i think i believe that's incorrect let me just quickly check with the margin scheme as well okay because all it's a it's a i don't know why they i said what was the ms photo i said they gave very few marks for this but uh, and also they gave you a lot of options um and this and this or oh, these these two right uh and for this he gave us uh i mean same thing the h going into h going out right so i just have to focus on this one uh as they accepted it as a but let me tell you one thing that since the molecule is symmetric okay when you have a symmetric molecule like the left side and the right side they kind of look exactly the same you got an oh h and carboxylic acid you got an h oh and carboxylic acid right so what happens is that if the molecule is symmetric the plus and the and the mirrored version the first one is mirrored and the second one is the original these two would actually be the same thing is that is that clear that um, if the molecule is symmetric that means you mirror one side or you mirror the other side it kind of means the same thing it's because the molecule is symmetric the left and right they kind of look exactly the same is that idea clear yes sir yes sir so so remember whenever you have a symmetry some of the combinations they get eliminated because the left and the right one they have exactly the same arrangement around them the two carbons have exactly the same arrangement around them so whether the first one is plus and the second one is minus or the first one is minus the second one is plus the kind of plus and minus minus and plus they're, they're the same so so these two are exactly the same the first one is different and the, and the last one is different so that's why he's saying that there are three versions uh but i still that's so what i did was i flipped one side right over here i should have flipped both sides because flipping one side mirroring one side this arrangement or this arrangement they're kind of the same thing i mean you flip mirror this one or you mirror the other side they're kind of the same thing right so this molecule both sides should have been mirrored so i'm going to what i'm going to do is i'm going to mirror the mirror the right side as well sorry the left side as well the h is going into the board so the h will be coming out of the board and the oh will be going into the into the board so I've actually this one is mirrored and this one is also mirrored over here only over here only the left side was mirrored the left side board was exactly the same so is this part clear that you mirror one side or you mirror both sides yes sir okay but anyways i'll i'll I kind of skip this one because uh, it's I mean it's too much of an effort just for two marks because it's pretty hard to actually visualize uh, all of this. I mean they've been they've, they've, there's actually been one more paper where you actually got a similar question. But keep this in mind this idea. I mean this idea is more important. That how do you draw a mirrored version of a chiral carbon atom? So I told you that there are three ways of drawing the mirrored version. Is that idea clear? 
Yes, sir. Anyways, next one. You've got uh, describe the aid of uh, how enzyme. I forget that. Uh, a peptide bond must be draw the peptide. Uh, proline is often often found bonded to glycine in a protein. Now, uh, they didn't give you glycine in the data booklet. You had glycine, but obviously, you won't have a data booklet anymore. So it will be given in the question. So I guess glycine is this thing. Glycine is an is an amino acid. An amino acid has what thing? It's got a carboxylic acid. And it's got an amine. So that's what that's what glycine is. Uh so anyways, glycine is I I think it's got a CS3 as a I mean that's the molecule. I just have to double check this one. As I but from now previously it was given in the data booklet. So glycine is uh it's actually got no H, I think. It's got CS2 actually. So this is glycine. It doesn't have a CS3, it's got it's got an H instead. And I've got this proline. I have to form a peptide bond. So proline is uh if you focus on this carbon atom, it's this carbon atom. On one side, it's got an NH, N with one H. And let's draw the H in the other direction. That's it's N with H. And the right side is a carboxylic acid. You can focus on this carbon atom. And then the N and the carbon are bonded by a cyclic chain. That's CH2, CH2, CH2. So three CH2s. So you got CH2, you got another CH2, and you got another CH2. So this N goes all the way and bonds to this carbon atom again. And this carbon atom will have a fourth bond with H. So that's that's what this look like. This, this is going to look like. So the bond, the peptide bond must be shown. So that's a condensation polymer. What will happen is that the H will be lost and the OH will be lost, they will form water, and there's going to be an amide link that will exist between the two amino acids. TK, remember this, that uh, the carboxylic acid will bond with the amine. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, we actually did one thing wrong. We actually drew glycine. I mean, this is... Sorry, this is uh, this one. The first one was glycine. The second one was proline, PRO. So we actually drew GLY PRO. They wanted to draw PRO GLY. I mean, it should have been the other way around. This should be on the left side and this should be on the right side. But the same thing will happen. The H will be lost and the OH will be lost and they would form a peptide bond. So this one is kind of incorrect. I mean, the order is incorrect. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Remember, in uh, like even if you look at the Marxist scheme, the order will be the other way around. Uh, the proline will actually come first, and the glycine will actually come later on. So, so the order, I mean, this thing will come later on. So, so you just have to correct the order. So we drew the incorrect order. Uh, name the type of reaction that forms a dipeptide. That's a condensation reaction. It's water gets produced. Now, proline is able to form a polyproline peptide chain. Uh, a section of the proline chain is shown. Suggest why the secondary structure of, uh, cannot be stabilized by, uh, by hydrogen bonding. So, uh, I'm pretty sure you don't have secondary structures anymore. Just one second, quickly. The new syllabus, 2022-24. So, uh, just hold on one second. Very quickly. So, anyways, you you describe the formation of an amide peptide bond. That's it. Uh, dipeptides, tripeptides. That's it. So they've they've removed the secondary structure. That's uh. The reaction between amino acids. Forget that. Forget that. Yep. No, it's not there. So we can skip this. 
you can remember protein secondary structure, tertiary structures. If you if you know biology, you would know this, but that's no longer in your exam. Uh, moving on, you've got this reaction. You're saying write an equation for the reaction of protein with NH. Uh, and so this one is a carboxylic acid. What does a carboxylic acid do? It releases NH plus one. So what will happen is the H plus one over here will be lost and it will react with the OHN and they will form water. So water is going to get produced. And so it's going to be C487. NH and uh, CO2. The H is lost, so it's going to be minus 1 and Na plus 1. So that's a typical acid base reaction. The acid loses the H plus 1, the base, its OH ion accepts that H plus 1 and they end up forming water. Whatever is left is your salt. Is that clear? Yes. Now, Protein has a secondary amine functional group. Secondary amines react with acyl chlorides, for example. Dimethylamine reacts with RCOCl in the reaction. Suggests the skeletal structure of R, the product of reaction number two. So this is reaction number two, and acyl chloride is reacting. And it's been pretty clear about the description, like what's going to happen. Uh, what's basically, I, I mean, he gave you the reaction, basically, you just have to do this reaction. So, so what is exactly happen, happening if you, if you just focus, focus on this part. So you got, you got N and let me draw, uh, this thing. It's, uh, this thing is R C O C L, right? So it's R C double bond O and C L. What happens is that this carbon has a very strong positive charge because it's RCOCl. The carbon is bonded to two very electronegative elements. N has a lone pair. The lone pair and the carbon, they get attracted. And what happens is that there's a kind of addition elimination reaction. This is, sorry, this is one reaction whose mechanism that you should know of. Uh, specifically not this reaction there's another reaction but what happens is that the h and the cl are lost and they end up forming amide links that's how amide links are actually are actually formed uh this is uh given over here as well in the notes as well like if you go to the polymer section you can part three there will be uh there will be reactions of acyl chlorides. Um, for example, this one. So I guess he's talking about this reaction. You got acetyl bond OCl. And this one is a very vigorous reaction because acyl chlorides always have very vigorous reactions. The carbon has a very strong positive charge that makes it very, very reactive. And the N lone pair or in the amine will get very strongly attracted to it. The H and Cl will be lost from the middle. So anyways, in this question, he even described the reaction. And so this is exactly what's happening. The N bonds with cetyl bond O and R. So N becomes or joins with cetyl bond O and R. Is that clear? Yes. So over here he's saying what will happen in this reaction number two. So the same thing will happen. The acyl chloride will come in, which in this case is CH3 and C double bond O and Cl. The carbon is strongly positive. The N over here has lone pairs. These two are going to join up. The H and the Cl will be lost. So that's what's going to happen. And he's asking us to draw the skeletal formula uh, specifically. So how do we draw the skeletal formula? It's, you got two carbon atoms, so that's one. That's your second carbon atom. The second carbon atom has a double bond O, right? First carbon atom has hydrogens. You don't draw the, those in the skeletal formula. Then it's attached to N. So I'm going to link this up with N. And this N has a uh, one, two, three, four carbon atoms. So it's a, uh, it's a. Uh, I mean, we can. So it's got uh, one, two, and. How many? One, two, three, four. So that's one, two, 
three and four, right? So that's one, two, three, four. And right next to the, to this end, there's a there's a seal bond O and OH as well. So so we need to we need to draw that as well. So right next to that's there's going to be another chain, and that's double bond O and OH. Right right next to this end. So is this clear? This is going to be the skeletal formula. Is this clear? Yes, sir. See, is this clear? Yes, sir. So suggest the reasons for reaction number three. So we've got a reaction number three happening as well. You got a carboxylic acid turning into an alcohol. So how do you turn a carboxylic acid into an alcohol, a primary alcohol? That's reduction. And remember, it's specifically LiAlH four. That's the that's the reducing agent. Is that clear? Um, yes, sir. Sir, but what if we want to stop at um alcohol instead? Wait, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, sorry. you can't. You can't really stop at alcohols. Okay, okay sir. I mean, so aldehyde basically. It's going to form an aldehyde first, and then yeah. I mean, one way you can kind of stop it. So you distill it in the middle. Because okay, aldehydes have lower uh, melting and boiling points, so they evaporate very quickly. All right. So, anyways, next question you got. So this, uh, we did suggest the reasons. Uh, now, proline was first synthesized using a multi state synthetic route, so that's the route. Name all the functional groups present in the reactants uh, of stage one. What do you know what this functional group is? Um, aldehyde. It's C. Mm. When you when you when you have two carbon atoms and two oxygens in the middle, that's that's an ester link. You remember that's that this is an ester link. Like if I want to draw this, it's going to look like this. It's uh, you got the first carbon. It's got CH two. And then you have uh, CO2, that means uh, C, double bond O, and O, that's CO2. And then it's uh, C2H5, which is basically CH2 and CH3. And you, you got two carbon chains. So there's, there's another one that's C double bond O, and O, and CH2 and CH3. So, anyways, that's that's an ester link. Remember this. That's that's an ester. That's whenever you have two oxygens between two carbon atoms. If you had one, that would have been a ketone. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. And this one is easy. You got a nitrile. You got an alkene. So, so you got an alkene and you got a nitrile in this one. State the type of reaction that occurs in stage one. So, what exactly is happening? The type of reaction that happens is only talking about the type. Remember, you got three types. You got you got addition. I mean, like you got addition. You got uh, substitution. You have elimination. Right. So remember, there are only three types. All mechanisms they fall under these three three categories. It's either an addition reaction, a substitution reaction, or, a, or an elimination reaction. So what do, you, what do you think is happening here? Uh, addition, sir? Yeah, that, that's, um, mm. that, that, that is addition, right? Sure. So my guess is addition. Now, now then you have these this other, I mean, it's a one mark question. I probably I'm gonna check the marks, you're probably gonna get marks for just writing addition. Now every reaction mechanism will have another adjective that's going to be associated with it. Uh, is it free radical, is it electrophilic, or is it nucleophilic? Do you remember this? Does it involve free radicals? Does it involve uh, electrophiles or does it does it involve nucleophiles, right? 
So all your mechanisms, they fall into, it's a combination of these two things. I mean, it's either the type, I guess, is addition, substitution, and elimination. And the free radical, electrophile, nucleophiles describes what type of species are involved in this. So I'm pretty sure uh, in this specific case, it's going to be harder to actually determine what type of uh, uh, reactions are going to be involved in this. Uh, kind of kind of hard to actually figure out what type of reactions are involved. Uh, but I suspect that the double bond is involved, right? So if there's a if there's a double bond, the double bond, what does it have? It's got a lot of negative charge, right? Is that clear? Yes, sir. So who gets attracted to the negative charge? Electrophiles or nucleophiles? Electrophiles? Electrophiles, right? So what has happened is that there, there used to be a double bond over here. I mean, that was your one molecule, right? There used to be a double bond over here between the carbon atoms. But then this molecule, the carbon over here had a positive charge, so it got attracted to those electrons and it kind of bonded with it. So, so it's probably an electrophilic addition reaction. So I'll take the marks anyway. I guess it's just going to be addition. The answer for this will be... It's... Which which part is this? Seven A part two. Seven A part two. I said the, that was the previous part. That's uh, they just give it. They just gave addition. That's it. I mean, you didn't have to describe the other part. Is that clear? Okay, so remember this part. I mean, this part, is this clear? When they ask you, they'll give you a random reaction, a completely random reaction. That's got nothing to do with what you study. All you have to figure out when they talk about the type, it's just addition, substitution, or elimination. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I should suggest a suitable region B. So what's, what's happening over here? Uh, the nitrile is changing into NH2. How do you change a nitrile into NH2? That's uh, that's a reduction. Like if you if you look at part three and you look at the reduction oxidation which was initially given this part, how do you turn a nitrile into NH2? That's you add LLH4 or you add nickel with H2 catalyst. So H2 with nickel catalyst. So those are the two ways. So this would be LiAlH4. Stage three takes place in the presence of an acid catalyst. Uh, this is stage three. Tell me what type of reaction is happening here. Make a wild gas. Oh, what's what's going on? The type of reaction. What has actually happened? I guess what has happened is. This thing remains the same, right? I'm just trying to figure out. Uh, this is CH2. CH2 and CH2, right? So this entire chain over here, it sort of curled up and it bonded with which carbon atom? It bonded with a carbon. I think it bonded with this carbon, right? I mean, you had CO2, C2H5. This thing remained exactly as it is. The N over here, uh, the CH2, 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 it curled up and ended up bonded with bonding with this carbon atom. Is that clear? Yes. And let me draw this entire thing. This is your ester, right? It's C2 bond O and O and C2H5. So anyway, something like this happened. So, so what what is what is happening? Is this uh, it is is it substitution, addition, or elimination? I'm only getting confused. Hmm? If a molecule gets produced, like one thing splits into two, so what is that? Substitution. 
the substitution is where one thing comes in and the and one thing gets replaced. This is more likely How to about be addition. Hey, sorry, addition. Elimination. It's elimination. Like you had one molecule, and that molecule sort of became smaller, and one thing got eliminated from it. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yeah, so it's definitely not addition because things are not adding up. Uh, definitely not substitution because in substitution, one other thing will come in and it will substitute something uh, like this is substitution. Like you've got Cl2, you've got ethane. The Cl comes in, knocks out one of the hydrogens, substitutes it. And the H that gets knocked out forms HCl. So one thing comes in and knocks out some other thing, right? So that's that is substitution. This is not substitution, but I'll, I'll just double check this one. Uh, is given us elimination. So this is this is elimination. Is that clear? Uh, sir, in elimination as well, isn't something also getting kicked off? Isn't Y getting kicked off? Isn't what what's going to happen? Um, in this reaction that you said was elimination, isn't Y getting kicked out? Oh, that or is that is elimination. It's being eliminated, right? Right, but uh, sir, you said this was not substitution. So, um, in the previous example, that in you just the wrote, previous that substitution. substitution is one thing comes in and substitutes something, something else. I mean, there is no thing coming in in this molecule. Got it. Okay, so there's only so. So remember, the three types. Addition is that you have more molecules and they add up. Like you got lots of X. And they add up and they form one molecule, right? That's addition. Uh, substitution, usually the number of molecules remain the same uh, because one other thing comes in, knocks out this thing, produces this, and some other molecule gets produced, right? That's substitution. Elimination is you had one molecule and something got eliminated out of that molecule. So that's elimination. And now you have to figure out the identity of Y as well. So what's the identity of Y? That's pretty easy because whatever is left, uh, that's Y. Uh, so it's, it's kind of, uh, you just have to sort of count the atoms, like really time consuming. It's just one mark, but kind of really, really time consuming. But we can try it. Uh, like, it's still pretty hard. Like, I mean, let me rub off all of this. If you figure this part out, so we figure this part out. I just need to figure out why. So I just want I, the first thing is I'll just count the total number of atoms so I can figure out uh, what's exactly being eliminated. So how many carbons? Very quickly, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. So I got 10 carbons over here. How many carbons do I have over here? That's two carbons, three, uh, four, five, six. So I got six carbons. So that means this Y at least has four carbon atoms, right? So it's got it's got at least four carbon atoms. That's that's what this is going to have. I mean, can we double check two, three? So I got uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I got 10. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So, yeah, I got 8 carbons over here. So, this Y over here has 2 carbon atoms. Can you still double check this? It's uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Sorry, it's got 7 carbon atoms. Why am I getting the wrong number every time? It's, so, this Y will have 3 carbon atoms. What about the hydrogens? How many hydrogens did I have? I, I had five, six, five, 11, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So I had 19 hydrogens. How many hydrogens do I have now? I got five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I got 12 hydrogens. So that means this thing over here, this Y over here, will have uh, seven hydrogens. And let's count the total number of oxygens. It's uh, two, four. 
So I got four auctions and I got three auctions over here. So that means I'm left with, so I've got three auctions over here. So I'm, that means out of the four auctions, which I originally had, I've got, so that this Y will have one auction. Is that clear? Is this part clear? Yes, sir. So what could be, what could be this thing? Like if I do an OH, there's, now there's a problem over here. If I do OH, will it have, uh, no, it can't be OH. And now you've got a big problem. It's, it's uh, I think we did not count the atoms properly. It's, uh, there is some issue because I'm getting the wrong number of hydrogens. Uh, so definitely not an alcohol because the alcohol over here has three, four, five, six, seven, and eight hydrogens. So definitely not an not an not an alcohol. If I go for a if I go for a ketone, then again the issue will be that uh, because I got one oxygen, the issue will be that my hydrogens are not adding up. So I think I counted the hydrogens incorrectly. It's just one mark, but. Uh, So they're saying that it's ethanol. So I definitely counted, I definitely counted the carbons incorrectly as well. TK, can you double check this? It's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons, right? How many carbons do I have away? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So not really sure why they're getting two carbons. Two, I'm so sorry, I missed this carbon. There's a carbon over here as well. Okay, now I'm going to get the, okay, now this, now this makes sense. It's actually going to be ethanol. Is that clear? Think is this part clear? Yes, sir. It's it's going to be ethanol. The guy missed this carbon over here. Asina, is this clear? No. I said now, uh, just just trying to complete this. Several further stages of Z is produced, and this paper is like pretty strange because everything goes for one mark. Now, after several further stages, Z is produced. You got Z over here and complete the diagram to describe the reaction mechanism of the final stage draw curly arrows. Uh, so all you have to think about in this case is what's happening here. Now look at it carefully. What's happening is that, I mean, look, look over here, compare this. This N is bonding with which carbon, the carbon right next to the carboxylic acid, it's bonded to this carbon atom. So, so what's happening is it's, it's this N over here, the one that I've highlighted, it goes and joins with this carbon atom. Why would it do that? Because this carbon is slight positive. And the N over here has lone pairs. So the first curly arrow that will happen is the lone pairs will get attracted to the to the carbon that's uh, uh, that's slightly positive. That is what's going to happen. And the CL will kind of break off. It will be repelled. The CL is slight negative. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So again, this mechanism is definitely not in your course. Uh, this is a halogenoalkane mechanism. Do you remember that? This is carbon with CL. This is SN1 mechanism. It's a SN1 or SN2 mechanism because this is a secondary halogenoalkane. The lone pairs on N are going to get attracted to it. So what will happen is they would even tell you it's nucleophilic substitution. Complete a diagram to, to deduce the mechanism, draw curly arrows, ions, partial charges, etc. draw the structure of the organic intermediate. Did they tell us which mechanism that they're following? Because remember, now for this, you would have to like go over uh, nucleophilic substitution mechanisms as well. Because there are two types. One is that the N comes in, 
and the CL slowly gradually gets knocked out. And the other one is that the CL gets knocked out first. I mean, for this, you would have to revise your AS. I'll just do this very quickly, one second. As a, for this, you need your as a was AS organic, just a second. So do we have organic uh, just a second that's the division chart uh definitely this one you really do you see best written somewhere this one I said this particular, I, I, I did send you the AS chart, right? So we're dealing with nucleophilic substitution. You had a halogen alkane and you have, you've got uh, N coming in. Now that's nucleophilic substitution. The mechanisms are also given in this, uh, in this one. So remember you have two types of halogen alkanes, primary halogen alkanes. What happens is that the nucleophile, whether it's N, CN or OH, they attack the carbon and they immediately start joining up with that carbon and the seal starts getting knocked out. So the carbon in the transition state has five bonds and the seal eventually breaks off and the nucleophile joins in. The other one is the tertiary halogen alkane one. The seal gets knocked out first. The carbon becomes a carbocation and then the nucleophile comes in and joins up. So primary and tertiary halogen alkanes have different mechanisms. Uh, in this case, all things happen immediately. In this case, the CL gets knocked out first and then the nucleophile comes in. Now, the problem over here is that we've got a secondary halogen alkane. So that means our mechanism is kind of like uh, in the middle. Now, they didn't, I don't think in the question they gave us any hints about which mechanism. They did actually give us a hint, not the structure of the organic intermediate ion. So that's still not a pretty strong hint, but uh, so I'll go with, I mean, I'll just choose one, which is that the N is now slowly bonding with the CL over here and the CL over here is getting knocked out and it's got it's got two H's as well. And in the next step, the CL will eventually get, it will eventually get knocked out. So I'm going to go with this one. So, but you had two mechanisms. So I'll, uh, so the first part was this was correct. Uh, they went, so they went with, I said, since, I said, sorry, they did mention one thing. The hint was there. They said that it was an ion. So the only way it can form an ion is that the CL gets knocked out first. TK and the N comes in later. The CL, if the CL gets knocked, knocked out first, this thing will have a positive charge. Because they did mention that it was, the intermediate was an ion. And then the lone pairs will come in and they will bond with this particular carbon atom. So I guess the hint was there that which mechanism is being followed, that hint was actually coming from this thing. So our mechanism was not the one that had both things happening simultaneously. We had a mechanism where the, in the first step, the CL was the one that would get knocked out. So the CL would get knocked out first. It will become CL minus one ion. It will become a carbocation, and then the N will join up. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Asina, is this clear? Um, yes, sir. So just a quick recap that uh, nucleophilic substitution. Just remember nucleophilic substitution. The you got two mechanisms. One is that uh, both things happen simultaneously. They form a transition state. The other one is that the CL knocks out, gets knocked out first, and then the nucleophile comes in. Now, in this question, uh, 
it was a halogenoalkane. And the only hint I found was that they were saying that the intermediate is an ion. So that meant that the Cl would get knocked out first. It will form an ion. It will form a carbocation. And then the N will join up. Uh, the reason it was harder to actually figure out whether it, it was SN1 or SN2 was that this was a secondary halogenoalkane. I mean, the carbon had two carbon chains. So that's why it was harder to actually figure this out. So I think this was a... This was kind of a strange paper. You can identify this is the carbon atom. So, so this one was kind of a, I mean, still a pretty lengthy question paper. Uh, identify the number of amino acids in the structure. Uh, just doing this quickly, like we can finish this off. You got this amino acid, break the amide links. Break all of them. Wherever you see amide links, break them. You got you're gonna break this amide link, this amide link as well. This is an amide link. You break all the amide links, those are your amino acids. So that's one, two, because whenever an amino acid is formed, as anyways, my computer just gave up. So, but is the idea clear that how did I figure out how many amino acids have joined up? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So let's continue tomorrow then. And note down this sure, paper. Uh, yes, note down this paper. This yes. is a 21 question paper 4 2. That's. Uh, so it's May June 21? It's March 21 question paper 4 2. I mean, you should, uh, you should try and do this paper on your own as well because this was kind of a, like a strange paper. Sir, uh, uh, also please send me the organic spider chart for AS. You can send that. Thank you, sir. Okay, then take care, everyone.